morning, church. It's good to see you all here today. And those that are online, thank you for tuning in and listening, either on Facebook or YouTube. Glad you are listening. And we miss you in here, though. So if you can make it in here, come on in here. Unless you're in another state, that would be a long drive. So you can stay at home uh, and, and listen from there. It, how many this morning believe that I, it, what God's Word says is true? How, how many would just say that here today? All right, so now last Saturday, not yesterday, but the Saturday before, uh, we had a women's meeting, and I think this was the first time um, we had a male speaker at a women's meeting, a breakfast on a Saturday morning, right? I think if I've got that right, Carrie Ann, I think that's right, correct, and, uh, and Elder Tracy. So Brother Landy, who was just there doing the, the offering, he brought a message, and um, I was sitting kind of in the back, you know, just, just listening, uh, back at the bottom of my stairs. But he had these pillars, these prayer pillars. There's 15 points on this, and, and gave this out to everybody. Now, we have these out on the welcome table. I don't know if we handed them out, but I don't think we did. But we have these on the welcome table. Church, you're going to want to get one of these. And if you're listening online, you're going to want to come and get one of these next Sunday because they'll be out here on the welcome table next Sunday. Um, and I'm not going to read all of these on there, but I'm going to tell you one that, in the little part that just kind of hit me. And it was number eight. God said to remind him of what he said. God said to remind him of what he said. And I really like that. And see, these are pr prayer pillars. And I love that because, see, I take God at his word. But if I believe that I take God at his word, I need to remind him of it. And I know that sounds kind of weird maybe for you. Maybe that's different. It doesn't for those of us that's been around a little while, been in the Pentecost circle or so to speak, or charismatic or whatever label you want to put on. I don't like all those labels. I just know I believe in the whole Bible, hallelujah, from the beginning to the end. I just know that um, it, when, you're, when you're in that kind of a circle, you begin to hear things that are in the word that you don't necessarily in others. Now, that's not meaning that the others are bad. I'm just telling you. And then there's some things you hear in the circles I just mentioned that you wish you never heard, right? <laughs> so there's that too. There's, not, there's problems everywhere, right? But there's also some good things and some really good truths everywhere as well. And this right here is one of them. You want to get one of these cards on your way out. Use these in your prayer life. Use these as points because church... We have to have a foundation of what we're praying on. We've got to have a foundation. We've got to have a firm foundation of what we believe, what we believe. Sometimes we pray prayers and we don't even believe it because we don't know what's in the Word. We're just praying something we've heard before or something mom and dad did all growing up or what have you, you know. But what do we believe? So get this card and get this. This really stuck out to me. So they're out there on the welcome table. Now, this morning, you know, I've done some dad jokes before. And I, and I just love them. And they're corny, but you know what? I don't care. So how many's ready for a dad joke? Come on. <laughs> what do you call a fly without wings? A walk. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's bad. It's bad. All right, I got another bad one for you. Okay. Why should you never trust a pig with a secret? Because it's bound to squeal. <laughs> All right, so yeah, they just get worse from there. Okay, I can give you some more. How many is ready for some more? No, I think, you, I think you're ready for it. My wife's like, please, no. Oh, God, no. Um, so... I've got a book. I got them all in a book, and I'm, I'm checkmarking the ones I've already done. So don't worry. We've got a lot more to do, church. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. All right. So this morning, I want to begin a two-part series. I've got to compose myself. All I can think about right now is dad jokes. Dad jokes. You know what? It, it's, I, I will say this. It's okay to have fun in church, right? It's okay uh, to have the joy of the Lord and let that be your strength and, and to have a good time. God gave us these emotions, and, and I like to smile. I like to joke around. I like to have a good time. A lot of people uh, 
they'll they'll listen to me speak or whatever, and, and sometimes I'm I'm serious, but sometimes I'll show that little side or whatever. That's me most of the week. So <laughs> I like to be lighthearted and stuff and ha- and have a great time. So, but this morning I want to start a two part series on the songs of ascent, the songs of ascent. Now the songs of ascent are found in Psalms uh, chapters one twenty through chapter 134. Now, before we get into what all that is, let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this morning. We thank you for your goodness, your anointing in your presence that is here in this place. I thank you that we can open up our hearts and our minds to receive what you have for us this day in your word. As we examine your word, I thank you that you enlighten each one of us with something we didn't know before that we need to use, that we need to, that, to have, that we need to strengthen us in our walk. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Now, the Songs of Ascent. It, maybe you've heard of these, maybe you have not. The Songs of Ascent are a series of those 15 songs, one, you know, chapters 120 through 134, and they each have that title in the beginning. If you're looking at, at uh, the different versions, some of them have a little, little different name. S- most have the Songs of Ascent, but some may have Songs of Degrees you know, or something like that. Um, because you have degrees, steps, or you know something like that. But basically, what it is, th- this collection, by the way, of chapters, no one really you know knows why per se they're called that. But the theologians have really kind of got a pretty good idea. But we can't say for absolute sure. No one knows absolute sure. But those theologians. They think that the best explanation is that these were songs for the people of God as they made the pilgrim journey to Jerusalem and the temple at the three appointed feast, feast, Passover, Pentecost, and Tabernacles. Now, see, here's the thing. As I went through these chapters this week and I read that, that I see why they say that. That's what I believe as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the first couple of chapters this morning. Next week, we're going to look at the, a couple more chapters or maybe some verses sprinkled throughout. But we're, obviously, we're not going to get finished with all of them if we just do two, two Sundays. But, we're, but that's by design and it's on purpose. Because here's what I want you to get in this, in, in this series is that We're going to dig into some verses and go verse by verse here today, the first two chapters. And what I want you to do is when we're done at the end of next week, or even this week, you can start. I want you to begin examining them. I want you to go through them. I want to give you home. We're going to study study it this this morning and next week. And we're going to look at it. And then I want you to go from there and you you do it as well. And he said, well, pastor, I've already got my study. That's good. That's good. Add a little more. Amen. Amen. Just, I'll give you just a little bit. And look, you don't have to do a whole lot at one time. Just do two or three verses. Look it up. See what they mean. Dig into some commentaries a little bit. Look at some of the definitions of some of those words. What they, you know, and try to get understanding. Look at the background. Look at the history. And it's fascinating to me. Now, I, I'm fascinated by it. Maybe you won't be as fascinated by it as I am, but I guarantee when you dig in and you look at these, you're going to learn something you didn't know before, and it is going to strengthen your walk in the Lord because it is the Word of God. Amen. See, as we begin to study, as we begin to study, and when you dig in and then you apply what you learn to your life, that's when your life changes. That's when your life changes. All right, so G. Campbell Morgan, he says this, We shall consider them as songs sung by those pilgrims who went up to Jerusalem to worship. These songs of desire and hope and approach are appropriate for the pilgrims' use as they go up to worship. Now, many suggested that also that the songs were sung at the ascent of the ark to Mount Zion. I want to look at this in 1 Chronicles 13, 6, and then they were used afterwards um, by the pilgrims' ascent to Jerusalem at those festivals. But... 1 Chronicles 13, 6 says this, And David and all Israel went up to these places that, that which belonged to Judah to bring up from the ark of God, okay, who dwells between the cherubim where his name is proclaimed. So see, to bring up, I just want to focus that, that phrase right there, to bring up. And that is the ascent that we see. It's the same Hebrew word used in a lot of these uh, verses and scriptures that we'll see. 
Now, regardless of the exact purpose and all of that, they're in the Word of God, and they're very strong writings. I, I've noticed some things in these, these verses this week that's like, wow, you know, I forgot. Look, I, I've read all of Psalms. I've read of all, all of Psalms many times. But when you really break down certain verses and certain chapters, and I've said this before, you will see things that you didn't see when you were just reading. A amen. Because look, when you read, you can forget things. It's the same as reading like a, a novel that's not, you know, the Bible. You can just read a book. You read through. The second time you read through, didn't you like go, oh, wow, I don't remember that. Because there's a lot of times, and if you're like me, when you read that you could read certain sections of certain, you know, pages or whatever in your mind somewhere else, even though you're reading. How many's ever done that? Mm-hmm. That's everybody, right? So your mind's somewhere else. Well, the second time you're going through, your mind's somewhere else on maybe a different part, but then on that part, you know, where it was before, now it's like, oh, wow, I, didn't, I don't remember that. And so that's why when it comes to the Word of God, we just don't read it once and then we stop and go, oh, I read the Bible, I'm good for my life. No, we've got to continue to read. We've got to continue to dig into those treasures because there, there's just, it's treasures evermore. It's everywhere. Now, when we see that we're not sure about, you know, all of the exact, you know, context of every single one. And as far as who wrote them, four of the songs are linked to David, one's to Solomon. Now the others are anonymous or unknown. Now let's get to where I really want to go, right here. Chapter 120. There's a title in the New King James Version for the chapter, and there's a title for the King James Version. You'll see this in a lot of versions. The title on the New King James Version for the chapter, like a summary, it summarizes the whole chapter. It's a plea for relief from bitter foes. In the King James, it's prayer for deliverance from the treacherous. This is very fitting. Both of those titles work. They're really good. And when you see in Psalms 120, verse 1, a song of ascents. So that's the first thing you see. Let's go ahead and put verse 1 on the screen for me. Psalms 120. In my district, well, they don't put it on there, actually on the computer program. Look, in the Bible, when you get one of these, all right, and you look at New King James Version, I did not realize that, okay? I don't look at the computer. Uh, they take, uh, Pastor Justin takes care of that for me. And, and so when you look and you open up, and you buy, you'll have different titles and different things. But like this is a New King James Version. And when you look at it, it says a song of ascents. I believe the King James Version, it'll say a song of degrees that's sitting there. Okay, now let's look at verse 1. In my distress, I cried to the Lord, and he heard me. Verse 2. Deliver my soul, O Lord, from lying lips and from a deceitful tongue. Now back to verse 1. People often find themselves in distress. What is the answer to that? The writer or the singer here tells you. Because these were sung, okay? So when I say the singer or the writer, I'll just, that, that's the same thing, all right? In my I cried to the Lord. So when you're in, the, in distress, you're to cry unto the Lord. Now see, this starts, distress in your life starts from the very beginning. When you're an infant, before you can even talk. I remember one time I was listening to one of those, uh, what do they call it, baby monitor, okay? And I'm in another room. Put the baby down for a nap. I got four kids, so this happened with all of them. All of a sudden, I hear the, wah, 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 and it's just going on and on and on. Wah, wah, and I'm thinking, oh, no, he, he got his foot stuck between the bars of the crib. You know, I'm thinking, oh, no, he's hurting. Okay. So I'm running upstairs. I run upstairs, and I bust through the door. And, and he's trying to reach over, and right down on the floor is his pacifier. His pacifier. Total distress. And I'm like, oh, man, you want your passy? Okay, here's your passy. You know, when pa and they got these different names for these things, pacifier, bing, your binky, and all this kind of stuff. And, you, and if I asked you with your kids, if you had kids, you probably had a different name. Who knows? You know. And so then, you know, I stick it in his mouth, and he's... And so then he just lays back down, and the, and the little tear was still there, and that mouth just, he just gets the comfort from sucking on that passy. What did the baby do? He cried out because he was in distress, 
and his Savior came. Oh, you want your passy? And the Savior was me. And I saved the day. And I provided exactly what was needed for the baby who was in distress. Why do I do that? And why is this silly? You're going to remember it. Verse 1. In my distress, I cried to the Lord and he heard me. He doesn't even need a baby monitor. Amen? See, and so when we have distress, a lot of times our, our thing is freak out. Dun, 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 dun. And we just freak out. We can't help it. You know, so many times in our emotions. But God doesn't want us to freak out. What he wants us to do is to talk to him. Amen. He wants us to cry unto him. Why? And he heard me. I love this. Verse 2. Now, in this case, the writer is in distress not because he didn't have his binky. It was because evil words were spoken against him from lying lips and a deceitful tongue. And this is awful when this happens, because I know you know what I mean. If, if it's happened to you, I, it has happened. Somebody's lied on you or whatever. It can keep you up at night because you just can't stand it. I know for me, I've, I've lost sleep because people lied on me, went and told other people all this stuff, and it was a total lie. I mean, I was so upset, you know. It was very, it, 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 it's very damaging when this happens. Charles Spurgeon, he says this though. When we are slandered, it is a joy that the Lord knows us and cannot be made to doubt our uprightness. He will not hear the lie against us, but he will hear our prayer against the lie. Mm, I love this statement. Because even though, because see, here's the one person that I know, that I, you ask me, who do, more than anybody else, who do you want to always believe the truth and know the truth? It's God. And you know what he does. So when they've lied against you, know that God knows the truth. And in your distress, when you're feeling bad about it, you can give it over to God. You can cry unto the Lord. And what I like about what Spurgeon said is, we just, we don't have to worry about who slanders us. Because God knows the truth. So when we're tempted to say, oh God, they're going to think I'm awful. We don't have to worry about it. Because God knows the truth. Mm, that's good. I want to read this from my notes. The lies our soul needs deliverance from are not just the lies said about us, but also the lies said to us. This... I. I this was really good. This one commentator, he said that the lies about God, the lies about man, lies about ourself, lies about life, identity, purpose, and happiness. Deliver my soul, O Lord, from these lies. Church, we live in a day and age where lies are just coming at us all the time. They're coming on from the news, they got the opinion news stuff. They don't quote, they don't just say what the news is. They, they twist it and they do all this stuff. They leave out facts and they're coming at you. But it's not just there, it's everywhere. You know, where people are just, they're, 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 we got medical professionals telling us lies about our identity. We've got, I mean, all kinds of things. So we got lies coming at us from everywhere. Goodness gracious, I looked at that spotlight and all I can see are spots. Hallelujah, in my distress. Thank you. Verse 3, if I can read it. Whew. I tried not to look at that thing. I did great until just now. And that's been weeks. We've had that. Oh, deceptive tongue. This is verse 3. What will God do to you? Now, see, this is, <laughs> this is what's really good. How will he increase your punishment? You will be pierced with sharp arrows and burned with glowing coals. Now, we switched to New Living Translation just so I could speed this up just a little bit. Notice here, the singer doesn't say he's going to get back at those who are slandering and being deceitful. He's not saying, okay, well, what can I say about him? What can I do? Wait till I see him next. Wait till I see her. Oh, girl, it's on. You know, they're not, he's not thinking that. This writer is not thinking anything like that. 
He has left judgment up to God. So he, in his distress, he cried unto the Lord because there's lying lips and deceitfulness, slander going against him. And what does he do? He leaves the judgment up to God. He says, oh, deceptive tongue, what's God going to do to you? Now, look, here's how Paul says it. In, in Romans 12, 17, he says, Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. See, God's the only one that can do the wrath. Okay, so we're giving place... We give place to we'll leave it up to the Lord. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Leave it up to the Lord. It's better that way. It's better. You try to take your own vengeance, you go off, oh, wait till they get home. Oh my goodness. Or wait till they get back to the office. Mm. And you're just gonna just you're gonna blow up at them. What good is that gonna do? Not a thing. Psalms 120, verse 5 says, How I suffer in far off. Meshech, it pains me to live in distant Qatar. I am tired of living among people who hate peace. See, in verse 5 there, it said, Meshech was a distant place, far from the land of Israel. Qadar was a place associated with the nomadic tribes in the land surrounding Israel. They're examples of heathen warlike tribes. So the writer is tired and weary. What's made him weary? Because he lived among the ungodly and was distant from Israel and his people. And he longed for peace. How many, not by a show of hands here, are listening, you're living in a place, you're living in, in just around individuals, they don't believe like you. They don't think like you. They've got, they're, they're, let's just say what it is, they don't know the Lord, they're ungodly. They have ungodly spe speech. They talk ungodly. They believe the ungodly. They believe those lies. They're spitting those lies. They're talking about it. And when you're around it all the time, it can get weary. I mean, you can get tired. You know, just uh, most of you know, I've said this before, you know, I, I, uh, I play video games, you know. I have some, when I have some downtime, I'll, I'll play video games. But I don't like to play video games much on my own. I do some on my own, but what I like to do is find other people to play with online. And so they have these games and I'll, I'll play online. And so I was playing with the, uh, the one I play with the most. It's a friend of mine. His name's Frederick Webb. He's a minister in uh, Arkansas. And um, we have a great time playing. And so I, I got on. He said, yeah, I was playing with this, you know, this guy. And, hey, he can join us, right? And I said, yeah, yeah, that's fine. And so this guy, you know, he, he had just played like one game with him. But this guy, when he got on with me, I mean, this guy just, I just couldn't take it. You know, after a while. And I'm good with it. Sometimes I know people, they don't talk like exactly like me. I know that their speech is not, you know, they, they, it's, it, their speech is colorful. Let's just put it that way. And I can deal with it, and it's fine. And you say, well, TJ, what are you accepting it? No, what I'm accepting is, is that they don't know any better. C come on. So what good am I, is it going to do for me to sit there and judge and point finger and go, oh, you're awful. Stop doing that. I'm like, what's that going to do? That's just going to put them on the defensive, right? So I have to find a different way to break down those walls. And usually I give it a time. You have to get to know somebody before you can do that, right? But there's some individuals, some things, it's like it's just so bad and it's so much. I'm like, all right, I'm done. I'm out. So I told my friend, I was like, man, I can't, I can't take it anymore. I got to go. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I understand. We get off and he actually left him too because <laughs> he, uh, he was feeling the same way. And we went and played with somebody else. And I know that other guy may have felt bad about it, but oh well. Because, you know, after a while, you can just get tired around certain individuals. You can get tired of hearing how some of them speak. You can get tired of them, you know, especially when someone's sitting there talking, and they're an adult, and they got their little kids, three years old, sitting next to them, and they're talking like that, and you can hear the kid talking and playing. It's like, what in the world are you doing, man? You know? And that stuff bothers me, so I can't take it. So what, I, I'm, I'm done. I'm out. He said, well, TJ, you know, I can't just get out like that sometimes. You know, I'm stuck. I'm here at work. I got a paycheck. I got a responsibility. And these people are sitting around here, and they're acting like this and doing like this. And I could do it. I, in your distress, in your distress, I don't have the answer for you, but I know who does. See, this writer, he was in distress. I don't know what your distress is, 
my, my, I don't have too many. See, I'm able to get out on the quicker side. It's easy for me. I don't have the same job you have. I don't have the same workplace. I don't have the same, I'm not in the same circle. Generally, the, those that are surrounded by me or, or surrounded around me, you know, they're, they're good God-fearing people. I'm, I, I'm, I'm at home studying or I'm at the school. We, we've hired, you know, Christian, it's a Christian school. We've got Christian teachers everywhere, everywhere we look. Everybody's great. They're wonderful. My wife was telling me the other day that uh, one of the teachers was talking about the environment, how wonderful the environment is, and she loves working here and this, you know, and all that, and she can't, you know, she's, she's staying another year and blah, blah, blah. She just loves it. It's like a family environment and, 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 and loves it. So you may not be in an environment like that, and I feel bad for you because I've been in the bad environments. I've been in those. It's not easy. And in verse 7, he sums it up here, the very last verse of chapter 120. He says, I search for peace, but when I speak of peace, they want war. Have you ever known someone who's always pushing back on you? It doesn't matter what you say. They've always got something contrary to say. I mean, I mean every time, it's like they're always looking for an argument. They're always looking for a debate. Look, sometimes I can, I can debate. I, I don't mind debating. You know, I like a good debate sometimes. And, I, and I'll do it. And my wife's grinning because a lot of times, you know, we'll, we'll debate stuff. She knows I, I don't mind it. I look back and go, why in the world when I was in high school, why did I not join the debate team? You know, it would have been great. Because I love doing it. Especially when I think I know I'm, what I know. Notice I said think. <laughs> I'm not always right. Just 99.9999%. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm not always right. I'm not. And I've got to realize that. But you know, when, there's, he says, he, I search for peace. But when I speak of peace, they want war. They want argumentation. They want conflict. That's how they are. The psalmist here, he's, he's wanting to speak peace, but every time he did, the response was hostile. Now remember, he cried out to the Lord because of his distress. These last several verses just describe his distress and, what, and how he gave it over to the Lord, what, you know, judgment to him. But this is really good for us to look at. Can you see the nuggets in here of how you can break this down and you can apply this to your life? We can't forget how we are supposed to respond. Looking here, this was his situation, but yet he showed us the way of how to live in that situation. Mm. Always crying out to God. This brings us to Psalms 121, title here from the New King James Version, God, the help of those who seek him. I love this one. All right, so Psalms 121, verse 1, a song of ascents. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence comes my help? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. I lift up my eyes to the hills. Now, the singer of the psalm looked to the hills, likely the distant hills of Jerusalem. See, Jerusalem was that city on the hill. That's what they call it, the city of David, city on the hill. And as he traveled towards the city to fulfill his pilgrimage, he was, you know, he's going that direction, his eyes, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. Now, even though he is far from Jerusalem at this moment, as he's, you know, writing this, singing this, he realizes his safety. Now, I want to read this from my notes. The point is wonderful. The singer understood that the group didn't need to arrive at Jerusalem before they came under God's protective care. He would watch over them on the journey. Now look at this statement here. God is just as present in the journey as he is in the destination. I love that. See, so many of us just get caught up in the destination instead of focusing on where we are in the here and the now on the journey. I, looked, I lift up my eyes, yes, but where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. It's not, oh, when I get to church on Sunday. It's not, oh, for these guys here when they arrive at Jerusalem. No, it's right that second right now. It's in that moment. My help comes 
from the Lord. I lift up my eyes to the, I'm on my journey. I'm on my way to my destination, but the destination is not what's saving me. What's saving me right now is God. I lift up my eyes to him. My help comes from the Lord. No matter what road we're on, no matter what circumstance we're facing, our help comes from the Lord. James Montgomery Boyce, he said this, what he is telling us is, is that his gaze did not stop when he looked upward to the hills, but that he looked beyond them to God who made the mountains. G. Campbell Morgan said, The city of God and the temple are to be desired and delighted in. The mountains upon which they rest are to be remembered. But not from them does help come to distressed souls. It comes from Jehovah. See, we got to look past the church building, the setup, the nice screens, all that, this, this, this neat pulpit where I even have my water made me thirsty. Mm. If you're thirsty, grab a drink. It's okay. Mm-hmm. We got to look past all of that. We got to look past the altar. We got to see the God that is behind it for our help. Paul said this, Hebrews 4, 16, Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. The key word is boldly. You don't have to be shy about coming to God. You don't have to come to God just on a Sunday. You go to God every single day. You say, well, TJ, I know that. I get it. But some of us need a reminder because we haven't even spoken to God all week. There we go. One amen. And, and look, it's, it's the truth. Sometimes, look, and praying over your fries don't count. When somebody, you know, they were, they were like, God is so good to me. They went through the, with the drive through He got me extra fries and put them in there. And I didn't have to pay. Well, so what? We need to focus. <laughs> My Lord. We need to focus on where we are in the here and now and come boldly to the throne of grace. We find mercy and we find help in our time of need now, at the here and now. I want you to look at this in verse 3. This is good. He will not allow... See, this is the help that God brings. This is the help that God brings. This is so good. He will not allow your foot to be moved. I remember that song we used to sing. <laughs> I shall, I shall, I shall not be moved. Such a catchy little tune. I'm glad we don't sing it anymore, though. Amen. <laughs> Our praise and worship leader laughed the most. <laughs> he <laughs> oh, hallelujah. He who keeps you will not slumber. This is the help we get from God. This is good. Verse 4. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. God helps his people. Verse 3. Your foot will not be moved by, being, by establishing them in a firm place. Charles Spurgeon said this. Our feet shall move in progress, but they shall not be moved to their overflow. In other words, I'm keeping on walking in the journey, and nothing's going to overflow me because I'm still established. I'm firm. I'm moving Okay, that's not what it means. It means I'm as firm on, I'm established on the inside. I have a resolve that the enemy can't take away. I have a resolve that the people in this world, when they say something contrary to the word of God, I will not be moved. Amen. When they say this and that, I will not be moved. You know, they got all these like conspiracy theorists and stuff out there too. And they try, uh, the fear mongering, that's about what I call that. I don't give in to that. I don't even listen to it. Look, I used to. I used to like some of it years and years ago, full disclosure. I used to look at it, and I wonder and wonder and wonder. I still wonder about the Twin Towers going down, okay? I just still wonder. I do. <laughs> I looked at it enough to where it was like, oh, man. <laughs> but it's still conspiracy theory. Amen? <laughs> that stuff, I will not be moved. I'm going to not be moved. What, not, just, not just things like that. I'm not going to allow that to shake my confidence in who God is. 
and what he's doing in me in the here and the now. I don't need to get caught up in all that because you know what it does? It distracts me and moves me over here and gets me out of the way of my purpose and what God has called me to do in my life, my destiny. Because, see, God hasn't called me to worry and fear. He's called me to move forward and reach people for him. Now, can it help me to know some things that are, you know, how things are? Yes, I'm not talking about you can't listen to somebody. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about getting caught up in it. There's a difference. You can listen to it, and it can be fun. It can be interesting. It can be all that. You can learn something maybe from it, whatever. You can think of this or that or whatever, but don't get caught up in it. Don't get caught up in the sauce. A- amen? Amen. Amen. Listen, if your favorite channel is the news channel and you listen to nothing but that, you need to change the channel from time to time. Amen. Because you will get caught up in it. We got to really move fast. Mm, You know what? I'm going to skip some stuff. Things we stand in. We stand in grace we stand in the gospel. We stand in courage and strength. As it says in 1 Corinthians 16, 13, we stand in faith. We stand in Christian liberty, Galatians 5, 1, right? We don't have to get caught up in legalism. We stand in Christian unity. We stand in the Lord. The goal is we stand perfect and complete in the will of God, Colossians 4, 12. Psalms 121, verse 3, again, He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps you. This phrase right here, this is the first of six times in this short psalm that the Hebrew word shamar, translated keeps and preserved, is used. The theme is that God will watch over his people as a watchman watches over the city or the party of travelers. Let's look at it. Verse 4, Behold, he who keeps, there it is again, Israel shall never slumber nor sleep. Church, our God never sleeps. I love that. He's always, his watchful eye is always there. Verse 5, the Lord is your keeper. There it is again. Shamar, he's, he's Jehovah Shammah, right? He's here, he's there, he's everywhere. Amen? The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. Notice the Lord is your keeper, your keeper. Now look at this quote on this verses right here on verse 6. This is from James Montgomery Boyce again. What the psalmist really means, though in figurative language, is that nothing either of the day or night can harm us if God is keeping guard. God is our covering against every calamity. He is our shade against the visible perils of the day as well as the hidden perils of the night. He is our keeper. In verse 7, it says, The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. There it is again. Preserve. This is Shamar. This means keeps or, or, or preserves. He's watching. He's there. He's keeping you. He's protecting you. Mm. Verse 8, the Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. The writer had great confidence in God's protecting power. Evil men may come and afflict the child of God, but the Lord shall preserve your soul. The evil doesn't have to affect you the way it affects those that don't know him. One last quote, Derek Kidner said this, In the light of other scriptures, to be kept from all evil doesn't, does not imply a cushioned life, but a well-armed one. I want you to leave that on the screen there for a few moments. In the Psalms we just read, it said that the Lord would keep us. He's going to preserve us. He's going to keep us. Where does my help come from? It comes from the Lord. Amen. And it said there in the psalm, it said, keeps from all evil. Now, what does that really mean? Does that mean evil, you're not going to be faced with it? Does that mean evil's not going to come against you? Does that mean like those lies that we talked about in this world that are coming at you from here are just all of a sudden they're just going to stop? No, all of that's going to come. It's going to come at you. What it means is that it does not have to affect me like it affects those who are not in the Lord. Because God keeps me, He protects me. He protects me. 
That's what I love. He's keeping me. He's preserving me. But I need to be well armed. We need to be able to use the word of God to come to him whenever we need help. See, get this church. Using the scriptures in speaking in faith against the enemy or speaking life to your circumstance is coming to God for help. Uh, get this now. See, normally when we need help, like when I need somebody to help me in the house, I'll call Christopher or, or, or Joshua or something. You know, hey, Christopher, man, can you come down here? Can you help me do... Okay. I'm asking for help. And I ask. And see, we can ask God for things. That's part of it. That's part of the help. But there's also something else we need to do. And we have to do. And we know this. We've heard it. But we need to make sure we do it every day. It's where we actually speak life to our circumstance. It's where we actually come against the enemy that's coming against me. Where I come against the pain that is afflicting my body, I have to speak to that pain. Are you here, church? But see, I can't do that unless I'm well armed. I can't do that unless I have the scriptures that say I stand fast, firm. Mm. Well, you know, see, those six services that are seven services we're going to do together with freedom, we're going to be doing a survey of Ephesians. And we went over Ephesians six years ago, line by line. This is going to be a little bit more one chapter a week. And then my wife is going to preach on Mother's Day. Amen. Amen. And I have chapter six because Pastor Horace is going to be preaching chapter one, and then I do two, I, you know, he does three, so forth and so on. So I get chapter six. We're going to talk about a little bit right here in chapter 6 real quick right now. Put on the whole armor of God. Wait, wait, wait. Let's go back to verse 10. Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. See, when he said in Psalms, when he said established, I'm standing. And it's not like... I'm not moving. Again, it's not that. No, it's, oh, no, devil, you ain't doing that. Are, are you here? And see, that right there, when I do that, I'm getting help from the Lord. Even though I'm not asking, because, see, here's the thing. He's given me the authority to do it in the earth and to speak to those things. So my help has come from the Lord. So that's all part of it. Yes, I ask from the Lord. I got a circumstance. I need wisdom. I go to God. I don't know what I'm going to do with this. Lord, I thank you that you lead and guide me by your spirit in this situation. Lord, as I call that individual and I've got to talk to them about the rent that they're about to increase on me. Lord, I thank you. You give me favor in Jesus' name. See, I went to God. But see, once, but see, there's a different thing that happens a lot of times. And it's still getting help from God. I'm speaking to the situation. So see, I can ask like that. Now, once I get into that situation and things start happening, I can start speaking to it. And I do different. So now instead of, Lord, I'm coming to you right now in the name of Jesus. No. Now, I speak to that in Jesus' name. I command you to get under my feet. Devil, you will not do this to me. You're not going to increase and put me in debt. You're not, whatever it is. And I begin to speak to it. But to speak to it, you have to be well armed. So it says put on the whole armor of God. Why is this? And we stand against the wiles of the devil. But see, if I don't know this, I can't do it. If I don't know this, when I'm in distress, wah, wah, wah. is that annoying? Let me do it again. Wah, is that annoying? And see, when we don't, we're not well armed, we don't know it. I can imagine God sitting there going, 
Oh my Lord, that's annoying. I love you, but my, oh man, please, oh, don't do it that way. No, please, oh. I can only imagine. Wah! No, he doesn't want us doing that. He wants us to pray and stand in faith, understanding that we don't wrestle, like it says in the next verse, against flesh and blood, but against principalities. I come against the principality right now over this school and command it to go in Jesus' name. Amen. See? Against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of weakness, wickedness in heavenly places. See, in the light of the other scriptures, see, we read this in the scriptures, my help comes from the Lord. I get the help. But I'm not going to be just kept from all evil in terms of I'm never going to see it. You're going to see it. It's going to come against you. It's going to happen. How many has experienced that? Come on. I know I have. What did you do? You can either win or you can pray the prayer of faith. You can take these, you can take these prayer pillars and understand a little bit more. Get, get more understanding. Look up these scriptures. Understand what, what's being said there. For we don't wrestle against that, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of weakness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God. See, I think sometimes we have this, uh, we got like half of it on sometimes, you know? Like we got half the armor on, half the armor off some days. It's like, man, I forgot my shield of faith today. It's just hard for me to believe. Well, well, I forgot what that scripture said, you know. Or I don't know what, man, what, what was, man, pastor was, he was saying something about this scripture. and Well, I don't know. I ain't going to worry about it. Well, no, what you could do is go back and listen to it again and find out what that scripture is. You could get that scripture or you could just call me. I'll tell you what it is. Or I could send you my notes and then you'll have all of them. Or, or you can go get that piece of paper, that half sheet out there on the welcome table. Amen? Amen. Church, I'm sorry. I, 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 let's all stand. I, I'm not trying to condemn anybody. It, feels like, it almost feels like it. Listen, what I'm trying to do is to get you to understand what so many of us in here, we already understand, is that our help comes from God, but we don't whine. We are children of God. In other words, they're going, look, my kids, they're, they're, they're my children. But they're grown up. So many times when the Lord's looking down, I feel like, you know, we're going, man, he's like, dude, grow up. Get your own binky. I don't need to pick it up for you and put it in your mouth. Get your own drink of water. You know, in my house, my kids, you know, I'm thirsty. All right. You know where the glasses are? Most of the time, I'm not getting them. Well, I, I don't remember the last time. I, got, I mean, I think one of them was sick or something in the room or something. Yeah, I get them water then, but I, most of the time, they're getting me a glass of water. <laughs> like, hey, bro. Hey, Sarah, can you bring me a plate of food? My daughter, she's so awesome. She's cooking all the time. She cooks really well. And um, sometimes I'm, I'm sitting there, and she's like, do you want me to put on a plate for you? I'm like, okay, sweetie. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm like, man, she could never move out. She's like, Daddy, you know, that, that, that. I'm like, yeah, you can get married when you're 30. <laughs> you staying right here. She's like, no. <laughs> so what we need to do is be well armed. We need to speak to the enemy. We need to speak life to our circumstance. And where does my help come from? The Lord. In my distress, what did I do? I cried unto the Lord. See, I'll get wisdom from Him, and then I'll begin to speak to it as He begins to lead me and guide me into it. You know. Right now at Cornerstone Christian Academy, we, we own that school for those that don't know. We are subleasing that space in the shopping center where we are. And um, that lease runs out, I think, what is it, August? It's in August. And so we'll be, because we're subleasing, and we'll be negotiating a new lease. And we can only afford a certain amount. 
and the amount that's already kind of been talked about a little bit or hinted towards, <laughs> knowing kind of what the going rate and all that is, it's like, eh, that's not going to work. So see, what did we do? The moment I began, you know, looking at that, I began to pray. Because see, in my distress, I went to the Lord. I said, God, we can't do this. And I knew that he knew anyways. He knows. But see, I had to talk to him. You have to talk to him. He knows, yes, but we talked to him. And I said, Lord, I thank you for favor. For favor. And I began to speak favor into that circumstance. And I believe that it is done in Jesus' name. It is done that we will have favor. I have proclaimed that according to his word. And, and so I did that. And so now I'm not going to sit there for the next several months. Oh, God, I'm not sure what's happening. Oh, oh my goodness. I'm not going to worry. I'm not going to be. I, I am not worried at all. Not at all. Because I already know that the favor of the Lord rests upon Cornerstone Christian Academy. And that in August, when we sign that new lease, it'll be the price it needs to be for us. In Jesus' name. It's either going to be the same or it might be a little more and a little more is fine. That's how things go. We know that. But it's not going to be that lot more. It's not going to be a lot more. I know that. Because I've already spoken to that situation in Jesus' name. What situation are you faced with? What relationship needs to be mended? What situation at work or what financial situation are you faced with? Are you in distress about anything? If you were, are in distress here this morning, just like those pilgrims who are on their way to celebrate and worship God, this morning, let's cry unto the Lord. And then let's speak to our situation and speak life to our circumstance. So here, if you're here today and you know you are in distress about something, I want you to raise your hand right now and let's pray together. We're going to pray right where you're at in your seat. You can do it right there. It's not like, oh, raise your hand, let me come for it, all that. Let's pray. Father God, right now, you see all the hands. And those that are listening online, there are several that are in distress. And Father God, we're not going to whine like a baby would whine. Lord, we're coming to you and we're asking for wisdom right now in Jesus' name. We're crying unto you, God. We're crying unto you as they did. They lifted up their voices to you. Lord, I thank you for giving wisdom to every single person that has their hand in the air, every single person listening online right now. Give wisdom in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And right now, we speak life to every circumstance in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We speak against debt. We speak against sickness and disease. We speak against lack in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We speak against anger. We speak against worry and stress right now in Jesus' name. And we say, stress be under our feet in Jesus' name. Worry be under our feet in Jesus' name. Because we have the favor of the Lord and we decree it now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory be to God in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father God. Number one on the prayer pillar says, ask in Jesus' name. And number two says, you've got to stay in love. We've got to recognize that Jesus doesn't change. His word is true from the beginning to the end. What he says is true. It's impossible for God to lie. God watches over his word and ensures that it comes to pass. We've got to ask in faith. If it's in the Bible, it's available to you. God said to remind him of what he has said. What you make happens happen for others, Jesus will make happen for you. Give and it will be given back to you in return. You must use the authority that you have in Jesus' name. Recognize there's a thief in the earth. 
you have the right to come boldly to that throne of grace and command that thief to get under your, under your feet in Jesus' name. Jesus always hears. He's never slumbering. He's always there. He responds to his word. He responds to faith. He doesn't respond to whining. He doesn't respond to complaining. He responds to those and he's a rewarder to those who diligently seek him in faith. And so we say, Father, we stand in faith today believing that every single circumstance that we're going through, Lord, that you're going to help us through every single one in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We say that we're the head and not the tail, above and beneath, beneath, not beneath. And Lord, that we have victory in Jesus' name. And we say, Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. Get your hand off our children. Get your hands off our marriage. Get your hands off our jobs. Get your hands off, off every single circumstance in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Can we give the Lord a hand? He's good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. That's how we're supposed to pray, church. That's how we're supposed to pray.